That is what we have heard from Minnesotans since August, since July. And to know that that went down and is just going to kind of slow roll again, we're already behind the team. Behind, behind the sides of this. We've got our team here that is ready to go. They've been working on it, and um, we want to get this fixed. What are your thoughts on the DFL's fix-it bill that they put forth that's going to the committee today? You know, I'm going to let uh, Representative Witte, uh, Representative Novotny, and Representative Bakeman talk about the thoughts on the DFL bill that's coming forward. So one of the pieces I offered was a DE that I uh, explained in my floor speech. And what the, uh, from listening to our stakeholders and law enforcement, this would be a simple, easy fix. And it, it puts it back into 60906 where it originally belonged, and it adds some uh, training component to it that I think law enforcement uh, realizes is always important, especially if you can uh, add that into this, especially in our schools. But what it does do, it removes the model policy. The model policy is really at your local level with your contracts between your school district and your police departments. That's where you put that in. They make the decision. Do they want the SROs and what standard do they want? And by doing the DE, we can always visit at another time if that's uh, the choosing to have more uniformity, but we could fix this today and get our SROs back in school and have, give the parents and the students and the teachers the peace of mind that I believe they deserve. Is, are there specific issues that you have with the DFL? Um, so there's a couple pieces that I've heard from law enforcement, we've heard from administrators, and we've heard from officials, uh, uh, school officials. And it's there's some wording in there about shall, but I also move it over to the DPS side of it, uh, Department of Public Safety, because I think it's important that it's uh, under the school safety um, group that is kind of monitoring this, and it can bring all our groups together, our uh, police department, our teachers, and let them do it. The boots on the ground, the people that are in the job, let them work together and not bring in outside groups that might have a certain agenda and really muddy up the waters. Keep it simple. It's an easy fix. Um, if it's a true fix, we hope that is, but it's got to be... Um, great input from all stakeholders on this that it's an actual fix to what the issues are on it. They can do it without your votes. They can do it without our votes. I would question whether or not they have it. As I mentioned earlier on the floor, there were 34 members of the House DFL caucus that came out against the school resource officer fix earlier this fall. I think that would be concerning for them. Uh, House Republicans stand ready to work if there is a true fix to this issue. More broadly, what are your priorities, your caucus priorities for this session? Sure. Uh, priorities, again, getting the school resource officer bill fixed for schools, but also looking at no new spending. We can't afford that right now. Um, the fact that DFL went ahead and they spent uh, $18 billion of surplus, increased taxes and fees by $10 billion. This is not sustainable. What we need to do is make sure that Minnesotans' lives are affordable. Those are our priorities. We know it's a bonding year. Um, the way that we're going to look at that is make sure it's roads, bridges, infrastructure. Um, we don't have a caucus position on it because we have not yet seen the bill. But those are the things that we want to work on for Minnesotans. Do you think the DFL will be able to tell their constituents and their interest groups no? I can't speak for the DFL, but what we're hearing from Minnesotans across, across the state is that they need affordable, safe lives, and that's what we're pushing for. Um, right now, under full one-party control by the Democrats, it has been irresponsible and unaffordable, and that's not the direction that we can go. Obviously, you don't have the votes in a lot of legislation. Do you, do you plan to be sort of a megaphone at every turn? to? let people know how you feel about certain things that are going on here? I think we are expressing the feelings and the thoughts and the concerns that Minnesotans have, and yes, we will use that platform to make sure that all Minnesotan voices are heard. Where's the House Republican Please. Caucus Please. on flags, on the state flag right now? You know, the, the state flag, the way that went through was concerning. We do have con some concerns about it. I would say that is not top priority right now. It's getting the school resource officer fixed. It's avoiding things such as the committee report that went through today, and it's making lives affordable. Those are our priorities. Minnesotans have to know what the Democrats passed this last session, what they potentially could be passing again this year. That's our priority. Do you know how many schools don't have SROs because of this? You know, I don't have those exact details. I'm sure that we could get back to you with those, um, but I don't have that. I know a number of schools have said, we're going to hold on this until we actually have language that fixes it, makes schools less safe 
How much of this session is going to be about the 24 elections and letting voters know what happened last year and what might happen this year? You know, I think Minnesota voters right now, when they look forward to November, they have to know how their lives are more difficult under one party control. We are looking to bring balance back into the state legislature by taking that majority next year, bringing that balance back. And that's what Minnesotans want at this point. So what do you think is the fix to the SRO bill? What is, I mean, you're talking about similar things, it seems to me. Yep. Um, as you heard Representative Witte um, um, kind of explaining what that fix is in his DE that'll be proposed within the, the committee later on, you'll be able to hear more about that. But just pulling out the most concerning things that law enforcement has. Just out of curiosity, how closely have you guys been talking with the Senate about their legislative priorities? Are you guys in sync on those things? Have you had those conversations yet? You know, as, um, as a leader, um, I meet with either by phone or in person with a Senate minority leader, uh, Mark Johnson, we meet weekly, and we will be in sync on those things. So the DE that's posted on the uh, website now, is that the uh, one that you're going to be offering? Uh, the DE3? Yeah. Yes, that's the one we're going to be offering. And it will come through uh, education uh, today and then public safety tomorrow. And, and, and throughout this whole process, remember, this started in education. And I've heard that, you know, lobbyists didn't, uh, police lobbyists didn't pick up on, on the education side. But now it's going to be able to be heard in the law enforcement side, where we never had that opportunity. So, and it affects them, and uh, so we're excited to hear that. Very briefly, could you just talk about what was done on the floor today, and if you feel it'll be uh, symbolic of what's to come in the session this year? Um, you know, what was done on the floor, the, the things that we tried to do, uh, objecting to a committee report and then declaring an urgency on the SRO issue, those are tools that we have to raise the level of concern on things that we need to have brought forward for Minnesotans. I can't say that that is the way it'll go all session, but we'll make sure that Minnesotan voices are heard, that we have the opportunity to take votes on what's truly important, and we'll use those tools. Madam, Madam Leader, your caucus has a lot of leverage on a bonding bill. Uh, we do. Uh, and uh, how is that number looking and the mix of projects and what is the perspective? You know, we do not have a caucus position on bonding right now. We will continue to look at what language that is. It needs to be um, solid projects that have a statewide impact um, before we would even consider having any type of a caucus position on it. Any University of Minnesota money uh, potentially for hospital purchases and that? Is that appropriate for state? You know, um, we typically support um, roads, bridges, wastewater infrastructure. I can't speak to what there might be out there for our higher education. Do you anticipate tying any policy discussions in with bonding or? I would say everything's on the table right now. We haven't had those full discussions. Stay tuned, though. Sure. All right, thank you. Okay, thank you.